Today, we're delving into a topic that unfortunately affects many people in their daily lives. Manipulation. This negative form of social influence involves subtle tactics used by individuals or groups to gain control and advantage over others. Manipulation can happen in various areas, like the workplace, personal relationships, or even large social circles. Understanding and reflecting on these tactics isn't just about protecting your autonomy. It's also about promoting healthier and more transparent relationships. Learning to defend yourself against manipulation is crucial, so we'll explore some of the most intense manipulation tactics. It's important to remember that all knowledge is neutral. It's how we use it that matters. These manipulation tactics we'll discuss are dark, and the purpose of this content is to help you protect yourself from them, not to use them against others. Knowledge can be like a tool, used for good or for harm, so it's essential to use it responsibly for self-defense or personal growth. We'll uncover how manipulation quietly infiltrates our lives, often without us even realizing it. By demystifying these techniques, we'll not only learn to recognize them, but also equip ourselves with the necessary tools to combat them. By the end, you'll feel more prepared to navigate the world with a critical eye and a sharper mind. Now, let's dive into the darkest aspects of manipulation. But before we begin, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps us out a lot and costs you nothing. Let's get started. Number 1. Triangulation This is a sneaky but powerful trick used by manipulators. They bring in a third person into a relationship to cause problems like fights or confusion. The manipulator uses this third person to control things, mess up the relationship, or distract from their own bad actions. In triangulation, the manipulator might turn one person against the other by sharing twisted or secret information between them. They could also use the third person to back up their own opinions and make the other person look bad. This makes the victim start doubting themselves and feeling alone, making them rely more on the manipulator. For instance, in a family, a parent might talk badly about one child to another, making the second child side with them and leaving the first one feeling alone and unsure. At work, a boss might spread bad things about one worker to another, causing them to fight and not trust each other. Triangulation is really harmful, because it destroys trust and stops people from talking directly. This lets the manipulator stay in control and avoid getting blamed for problems. People who fall for this trick often end up stuck in fights and misunderstandings without knowing it's because of the manipulator. To stop triangulation, you need to recognize it talk openly and honestly with the others involved, and set clear boundaries. It's important to question if the information you're given is true, ask the others directly for clarification, and refuse to join in any talks or actions that make people fight or not trust each other. Number 2. Double Bind This is a sneaky way to mess with someone's mind. It happens when you're stuck between two choices or messages that don't make sense together. No matter what you do, you end up feeling like you're wrong or in trouble. This makes you feel helpless, confused, and worried because there's no right way out. The person doing the manipulating might give you conflicting expectations or demands. For example, a parent might get mad at a kid for not talking enough, but when the kid tries to talk, they get yelled at for being disrespectful. In this situation, the kid feels stuck because if they speak up, they get in trouble. And if they stay quiet, they still get criticized. Double binds can happen in relationships too. One partner might say they want more space, but then they get upset when the other partner spends time alone. This leaves the person feeling unsure about what to do because no matter what, they get a bad reaction. This kind of manipulation messes with your head because it makes you doubt yourself and your judgment. You start thinking, maybe you're just not good enough. This can make you rely more on the manipulator to tell you what to do. To deal with a double bind, it's important to realize that it's a trick and not your fault. Talking to friends, counselors, or therapists can help you see that your feelings are valid. Also, 
Setting clear rules and speaking up for yourself can protect you from this kind of trickery. Number three, projection. This is when someone blames you for their own mistakes or feelings. The manipulator can't or won't admit when they mess up, so they make you feel like it's your fault instead. They twist things around so you start doubting yourself and feeling guilty for stuff that's not even your fault. For example, let's say your partner gets jealous easily. Instead of admitting they're feeling insecure, they accuse you of flirting with others. They're actually the one having those thoughts, but they blame you instead. Projection lets the manipulator avoid facing their own flaws. They make you feel bad for things you didn't even do. This can mess with your confidence and make you rely more on them emotionally. To deal with projection, you've got to trust your own feelings and set boundaries. Don't let them make you believe their lies. Keep track of your thoughts and talk to someone you trust for feedback. And most importantly, remind yourself that you're not responsible for their problems or feelings. If things get really bad, it might be time to cut ties with the manipulator or get help from a professional. Don't let them drag you down with their mind games. Number four, time pressure. This is when someone tries to push you into making quick decisions by creating a false sense of urgency. They say you have to act right away to avoid something bad happening or to seize a rare opportunity. This tactic preys on your fear of missing out and makes you feel anxious, leaving you with little time to think things through or get advice. You might see this in situations like high-pressure sales pitches, where the seller claims there's only a limited time to buy or that there are just a few items left. But it can also happen in personal or professional relationships, like when someone demands an immediate answer to a big request or sets an unrealistic deadline for a major decision. When you're under time pressure, you might end up making rushed choices that aren't good for you, but benefit the manipulator. This urgency stops you from weighing all your options, seeking advice, or trusting your gut. To beat this tactic, it's crucial to recognize when someone's trying to rush you into a decision. Don't give in to the pressure to act right away. Ask for time to think things over. Remember, very few decisions actually need an instant response. Also, keep in mind that time pressure is a sign of manipulation. Waiting a bit might give you more info to make a better decision. Number five, inconsistency and unpredictability. Inconsistency and unpredictability are manipulation tactics where the manipulator behaves erratically, causing confusion and insecurity in the victim. This behavior can vary greatly, from being loving and attentive one moment to being cold or disdainful the next without any clear reason. Such inconsistent actions keep the victim constantly disoriented and anxious because they can't predict or understand the manipulator's behavior. This tactic is often seen in abusive relationships, where the abuser alternates between kindness and cruelty to create an emotionally unstable environment. The victim, trying to understand the manipulator's behavior and seeking approval or love, may find themselves trapped in a cycle of trying to please the manipulator without ever achieving stability or satisfaction. Unpredictability works because humans naturally seek consistency and stability. When someone's actions don't make sense or follow a predictable pattern, it becomes challenging for others to adapt or respond appropriately. This can lead to emotional and psychological dependence on the manipulator, who seems to be the only source of relief. To deal with inconsistency and unpredictability, it's crucial for the victim to recognize the manipulator's pattern of behavior. They must understand that it's not their responsibility to constantly correct or adapt to please the manipulator. Establishing clear boundaries and maintaining emotional distance are vital. Seeking support from friends, family, or professionals can also provide the perspective and assistance needed to deal with this form of manipulation and rebuild self-esteem and independence. Number six, emotional blackmail. Emotional blackmail happens when someone uses another person's feelings to get what they want. They might make the other person feel obligated, scared, guilty, or ashamed. So they'll do what the manipulator wants, 
even if it goes against their own interests or values. At the heart of emotional blackmail is the abuse of the emotional connection between the two people. The manipulator might suggest directly or indirectly that their happiness or well-being depends on what the other person does. This puts pressure on the other person to act in a certain way, making them feel responsible for the manipulator's emotions. Common examples of emotional blackmail include phrases like, if you really loved me, you would do this, or I can't believe you would let me do this alone. These statements make the other person feel like they have to do something, or else they'll lose the manipulator's love or approval. To deal with emotional blackmail, it's important to recognize when it's happening. Setting clear boundaries and communicating assertively is key. This means expressing your own needs and feelings without letting fear, guilt, or obligation control your actions. Building self-esteem and getting support from friends, family, or professionals can also help you resist the pressure and stay true to yourself. Number seven, gaslighting. Gaslighting is when a manipulator denies events or twists facts to make the victim doubt their own memory. They might also belittle the victim's feelings, calling them crazy or irrational, or use secret information to make them look bad. This makes the victim question themselves and seek approval from others. Gaslighting can happen in relationships, at work, or even in politics and the media. It can cause anxiety, depression, and make someone distruse their own thoughts and memorize. To fight gaslighting, it's important to trust yourself and your own memories. Keep a record of events, talk to others for validation, and set clear boundaries with the manipulator. In severe cases, you might need to leave the situation altogether. Recognizing and naming gaslighting helps take power away from the manipulator and empowers the victim. Number eight, false social approval. False social approval is when someone pretends or exaggerates how much support or agreement they have from others to influence someone else. They might make up stories, twist facts, or make it seem like more people agree with them than actually do. This tricks the person being manipulated into thinking that a certain opinion, behavior, or product is more popular or accepted than it really is. It plays on the fact that people often change their opinions or actions to fit in with what they think everyone else is doing, especially when they feel uncertain or pressured. By making it seem like lots of people support them, the manipulator can make the victim think that following their lead is the right or popular choice. For example, in advertising, they might use fake testimonials or claim a product is a bestseller without proof. In personal relationships, they might say everyone thinks or says something to pressure the victim into agreeing. To protect against false social approval, it's important to think critically and question whether claims of popularity are true. Look for solid evidence before believing claims of widespread agreement and trust your own judgment even if it means going against what seems like the majority. Recognizing and understanding this manipulation tactic helps people make choices that are truly their own, rather than being swayed by fake or exaggerated social norms. Number nine, concealment of information. Concealment of information is when someone hides important details from another person on purpose. They do this to control decisions or how someone sees things. This sneaky tactic can really change how someone understands a situation and what they do about it. They end up making choices without knowing all the facts, which isn't fair. This kind of manipulation can happen in lots of places, like in relationships, at work, or even in politics. For example, in a relationship, someone might keep secrets about their money or their past which can make their partner feel unsure and affect how they trust each other. At work, a colleague or boss might not tell everything about a project, which can make it hard for someone to do their job well or make good decisions. In sales or negotiations, hiding things about a product, like problems it might have, can trick a customer or the other party into making a choice they wouldn't if they knew everything. Even in politics, Keeping important info from the public can change how people think and even how they vote. To protect against this kind of manipulation, it's important to stay alert and ask lots of questions. 
Check the facts from different sources and always ask for things to be clear and open. Being smart about information and not just believing everything you're told helps to spot when someone might be hiding something. Once people know that keeping information secret is a way to control them, they can be more careful and not let it influence their decisions. Knowing how vital honest communication is can help build better, more honest relationships. Number 10. Fear Attachment Using fear attachment means making someone think that something really bad will happen if they don't do what they're told. This could be anything from direct threats to hinting at scary things that might happen. The aim is to make the person feel like they have no choice but to listen to the manipulator to avoid the bad stuff. This happens in lots of places like in relationships, at work, in marketing, and even in politics. For example, a partner might say they'll leave if the other person doesn't do what they want. Or a boss might hint that someone could lose their job if they don't do what they're told. In ads, they might try to scare people into buying something by saying it'll protect them from danger or embarrassment. To protect against fear attachment, it's important to spot when someone's trying to scare you into doing something. You should think about whether the threats are real and look at all your options. It's also good to stay calm and not rush into decisions when you're scared. Building up your confidence and having people to support you can also help you not to be affected by this kind of manipulation. Knowing what your rights are and being clear about your own limits can help you stand up to scary threats and not let them control you. And learning ways to deal with fear in a healthy and strong way can stop manipulators from messing with your feelings and decisions too much. Number 11. Blame Game The blame game is when someone tries to make you feel guilty for their own mistakes or bad behavior. They shift the blame onto you, even if you didn't do anything wrong. They want you to doubt yourself, say sorry too much, and even take on things that aren't your fault. They do this to avoid getting in trouble for what they did and to keep control over you. This happens in lots of places, like in bad relationships, at work, or in messed up families. For example, in a relationship, one person might blame the other for getting jealous, saying it's their fault for acting in a certain way. At work, a boss might say a project failed because of you, even if it's not true. To stop the blame game, it's important to know what's really happening and not take the blame for stuff that's not your fault. Building up your confidence and knowing your worth helps you see when someone's trying to make you feel bad for no reason. Keeping a record of what happened and talking to others about it can help you stand up for yourself. Setting boundaries and saying no to unfair blame is important too. Getting support from people you trust can help you see through the manipulation and stop feeling guilty all the time. Number 12. False Praise False praise is when someone gives you fake compliments to control you. They say nice things to make you trust them or feel like you owe them something. It's like buttering you up before asking for a favor or hiding their true intentions. They're good at making you feel good about yourself, so you're more likely to do what they want. They might compliment your looks, smarts, or any other quality, but it's not because they really mean it. Real compliments come from genuine admiration. But false praise is all about manipulation. To protect yourself from false praise, you need to be able to tell if the compliments are real or not. Pay attention to how the person acts when they give the compliments and if their words match their actions. Having confidence in yourself and not relying too much on what others say about you can also help you see through fake praise. Number 13. Playing the Victim Playing the victim is a sneaky way people manipulate others by making themselves seem like the ones who are unfairly treated by life or others. They do this to get sympathy, dodge blame for their actions, and get others to do what they want. Manipulators act like victims to make people feel sorry for them and change their behavior to help them out. They might tell stories about how life has been tough on them or how others have wronged them. This way, they aim to get others to feel bad for them and do things their way. 
This tactic can be really effective because most of us want to help those who seem to be in trouble. But instead of being genuinely upset, manipulators are just pretending to be victims to get what they want. Sometimes they even twist things around to make themselves look innocent, especially if they've done something wrong. To protect yourself from falling for this manipulation, it's essential to balance empathy with a critical eye. While it's important to empathize with those who are truly going through hard times, it's also crucial to question things when someone constantly plays the victim. Setting clear boundaries and keeping a fair perspective on everyone's actions can help you stay in control. Number 14. Using silence to manipulate. Intentional silence, also called the silent treatment, is when someone purposely ignores or refuses to communicate as a way to control or punish others. This tactic can be really harmful because it makes the other person feel rejected and unsure. When someone uses intentional silence, they ignore messages, calls, or any attempts to talk. This leaves the other person feeling lonely and confused, wondering what they did wrong. The goal of the manipulator is to make the other person doubt themselves and feel guilty, even if they didn't do anything wrong. Silence hurts because humans need communication and validation. When someone ignores us, it makes us feel worthless and invisible, which can really damage our self-esteem. To deal with this, it's important to recognize that intentional silence is a form of emotional manipulation. It's not about our worth or actions. We should maintain our self-respect seek support from others and express our feelings without begging for attention. Setting clear boundaries and rethinking our relationship with the manipulator is also important for our emotional well-being. Remember, it's important to treat others fairly, but we shouldn't let them take advantage of us. Finally, seeking wisdom means understanding situations deeply and not making quick judgments based on emotions. If you've watched this far, comment to let us know.